Hi, I'm Roger Palmer. I'm the Biology, Chemistry, Environmental Science Product Manager, and we're going to talk today about the germinating seeds. Seeds in the United States are a billion dollar um, industry. And of course, what we have to do is get the genetic material to farmers or to local people that want to grow their own gardens, for instance, um, to have the material. Um, and that genetic material also has to have the energy or the food source to um, sustain it until it can reach up out of the ground and start, you know, producing its own food. And in that case, then the, the care and um, consideration of, of working with seeds is going to be important to, to keep it under certain condition. And of course, when you buy seeds like beans or other kinds of seeds in the store, they're dried. Um, and until they meet the right condition in the soil, they'll start to uh, go through, you know, cell processes, subdividing, and that's what we're going to be measuring. Um, and instead of having to wait all the time for a root to grow or the plant to show up, um, we're going to take a look at the respiration that starts almost immediately once the conditions are met for these seeds. Um, that respiration we're going to use is the CO2 sensor and following some of these beans that we've got set up here. So the cool part about being able to see inside the seed and actually watching this process start, in other words, the life starting to take over, is that respiration is gonna begin immediately. They're gonna take energy resources to drive processes to make new cells, root cells, plant, leaf cells, all of those things. And so we're gonna to start to follow that immediately with a CO2 sensor. CO2 sensor over here is going to be what we use. We're gonna turn that on. I've already started up SparkView file and uh, opened up this, uh, this session so that I can connect to the sensor. And we've calibrated the, uh, calibrated the sensor to begin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the dry seeds as a baseline so you can see what cellular respiration is going on when these are being sent to you as a customer or to um, you know, the local family that wants to plant these or even just why they can sit on the shelf for such a, a long time before we use them even just in terms of, of food or any process. So we're gonna go ahead and hook that up in here and I am gonna start the file to connect that um, those seeds. And we're gonna follow first the dry seeds. We'll follow that for 10 minutes. We'll take a look then at the uh, damp seeds, those that have been sitting in water for a full day. So the germination is, is completely underway. And then finally, we're gonna take a look at what's the germination, sorry, the cellular respiration process after we've put the beans onto a, a bed of ice to cool them down. We're gonna see, does it slow down the process or does it speed up the process in terms of these rates? We've got our three sets of seeds. We've got the dry seeds to have as a standard to take a look at first. We're gonna place the CO2 sensor into the container. I like to put them lengthwise like this because as the CO2 is generated, it's heavier than air, so it'll take a bit to raise up until it gets to the sensor. So having it straight like this is better than necessarily standing the, the bottle on end because the CO2 will have to fill up the bottle before it reaches the sensor. Now we're gonna run this experiment for the uh, 10 minutes. So we're gonna hit start in the project and we're gonna watch the data collect. So we've made our first run with dry peas. Um, make sure you take a look at the, the axis down the left side. It's only up about three or four parts per million um, as an average. We went from about 310 to 318 um, in 10 minutes. So, sorry, a couple, of, a couple of parts per million per minute. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch these dried peas and we're going to put a, a set of peas that have been soaking. Okay, we'll put that in there and we'll watch these for 10 minutes. This will be run two.
So there we've got 10 minutes and we see we've gone up about uh, 140, 145 for the 10 minutes, 14, 15 uh, parts per million per minute, uh, rather than the 10. That took the whole time for the dry beans. Now, what we wanna do is we're gonna take this out. We'll put these peas back here. And uh, we're gonna take a look at the same process. These have been soaked just at the same time as the the um, seeds here that we used that were soaked. And uh, what we're gonna do though is, is keep them cool. They've been sitting on ice uh, for 25, 30 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and put them down here so that we get the same sort of pattern of these and put the seeds in there and I'll try to spread them out across the bottom. We'll put the CO2 sensor in there, but then I wanna still keep it cool. So we're gonna pour the ice in here. Try to keep the bottom of that nice and cool while the processes are going on. Yeah, let me prop that up just a touch with some ice. There we go, nice and flat. And we'll give our last run a try and we'll see what happens to the process, uh, respiration process in, the, in this cooling container. So we finished the last cooler uh, 10 minute run. Um, and although we didn't start all the way at uh, one minute because the CO2 from the previous run was probably in the sensor um, and was, was going downwards until they met the, the new produced gas. Um, it's gonna be easiest to take the slope of those to determine which is faster or slower. Notice I think in the last five minutes it, it, it leveled out nicely in a different kind of a slope um, from the top part of that curve to the bottom, the first, you know, like from one minute to five minutes. So you can take uh, either one of those. Um, I think uh, it would make more sense at the end that last five minutes as a, as a rate for what the cold seeds are experiencing for respiration. But we've had the chance then to compare um, dry seeds to wet seeds to cooler wet seeds. And uh, we'll then talk about that in your analysis. Now we were going to see what uh, conditions are uh, perfect or the, the best, ideal for seeds. And seeds we want to be able to take when they've been grown, uh, to store them, to be able to get them to then the end user, whether that's a new farmer putting them in his whole crops, a uh, local individual person putting them in their gardens. Um, but we're following that process again by the respiration, the rate, um, the amount of respiration that's going. So we've taken a look at dried, uh, wet, damp, and then damp and cool beans. As you're taking a look at those, that rate is probably going to be best showed by um, including the um, slope of the area that, that's, that's changing. Now, what you'll notice in this last run, we still probably had CO2 in the, the sensor. There's a small paper shield so that it has some CO2 in there and that was leaving the sensor until finally the beans that were creating CO2 started to fill it. Um, it's intriguing that we have two sort of areas here that probably show respiration. I'm going to go, you know, and this is again up to you when you have your own um, data that's being running, is that there's two rates here. And it looks like this, the secondary rate may be a better one to measure only because it's been sitting in the cold area and it may have just cooled down to a, to a rate that's more reasonable for the cooled uh, peas. And so that's the one I'm going to take a look at. And so making that a little bit more than just the lowest value and the highest value in terms of the rate. Let's use some tools down here at the bottom to determine the rate of just that last segment so that we get a better feeling for that. Now, if I start here, right about where that, that line looks like it makes kind of a curve, I'm gonna use that selection tool and I'm gonna highlight the area of the last five or so minutes. There are two places to access the tools for this region. You see that when you click on your box that had selected this area of the graph, that you'll have some tools at the top. Um, to look for curves or best curve through there. And then they also occur at the bottom. So I'm gonna go where it says the best linear fit in that region. And I'm gonna use the tools from the toolbar at the bottom. That's gonna put a line in there. And you'll see the slope M at a tenth, uh, tenth part per million per uh, minute.
So it's using, or per second actually, um, they're using two units that you have on the, both axes. All right, so that's what this particular slope is. You're gonna have the job to, to now analyze how cold compares to the wet. And the reason we're gonna be able to do that is we can turn this on. Uh, we'll see that's the, the run that was just wet but not cold. And then we can also compare those to the respiration of the dry beans. And if I zoom to the whole sets of graph, you'll be able to see those three. Um, oh, I've got a selected area. So probably what I can do is clear out of that and then zoom to all my data. And you can do analysis by showing the rates of all three of those sets of beans. Um, at that point, you can answer the questions at the back and then submit your assignment to your teacher. Uh, we wish you the best and understanding that respiration is an indication of cellular activity from taking these beans from being dormant and then becoming the seeds for the next generation. Good luck.